Our presenters for today are Steve Harbrexi, who is the founder and CEO of TPA Global, Virinder Sharma, who is a partner at TPA Amsterdam, and Jing Van Galen Wang, who is the director at TPA Global Amsterdam and also leads the China practice of TPA Global. Thanks, Anusha. Good, uh, good morning, good afternoon to, uh, to all of you. Uh, this is Steve Harbrexi. I will be uh, doing an introduction, um, and and then uh, we uh, we will uh, lead you through some some Chinese regulations uh, in the beginning. Uh, after which we will address a few value chain analyses, uh, which are applicable to all of our clients, most of our clients, and we will address the uh, the concept: of how much of that value chain and transformation details uh, are you supposed to this close to your tax uh, inspector in China uh, in, in, as part of your local um, financial year 2016 local PP documentation. Uh, before we kick off, uh, I think the, the introduction is uh, it, it, it needs to be why are we doing a value chain analysis and why is the tax inspector in China asking for a value chain analysis? And the answer is pretty simple. If you if you take uh, a total value chain and you visualize a total pie and you take one slice out of that pie and that slice is being reported into the Chinese tax uh, tax return, that's sort of the the way we are looking at transfer pricing. So visualize a, t a total value chain. Uh, a part of that is reported in your tax return in China, and then as a as a, an appendix to the tax return, we have, as of FY 2016, we have a master file, we have a local file, we have, for the bigger companies, a country by country uh, reporting, and we have some local TP forms. In, in particular, in, in China, we have 22 forms which you need to file uh, for tax authorities to uh, do a screening on you, whether you're the best uh, candidate for uh, one of their tax and transfer pricing audits. The, is China uh, the only one who is, uh, and through this course we will, will, will uh, share that, that with you, is China the only one who's focusing on this total value chain? The answer is uh, uh, no, but uh, China is definitely ahead of the curve. So the Chinese value chain analysis, although it looks quite rudimentary, it's a little bit ahead of the curve. We've seen uh, two other tax authorities putting some uh, the word out that they need uh, as part of documentation, as part of audits, or just as a strong recommendation, they need a value chain analysis to be done, and that's the German tax authorities and the South African tax authorities. So that, that means uh, the word is spreading, and, and China is not on its own anymore when it comes to disclosure of a value chain or preparing a value chain if tax inspectors ask for it. With that, I'd like to go to uh, and, and give the floor to uh, to Ying, who will uh, tell you about the, the technical background, and soon we will get to our case studies uh, where we will address how much of the value chain we believe uh, is being shared with the, the tax inspector in China. and according to us, what portion will need to be share, shared with uh, with this person. I, I would like to give the floor to you. Okay, thank you, Steve. I think the, when we come to the value chain analysis, we, first of all, I would like to bring you back to like 20 years ago. That's why we actually started this, all this process. You know, China, we started like 20 years ago. Those days, we welcomed the, the foreign multinationals come to my country. We give a lot of, uh, you know, a sort of uh, uh, reduce the tax rate and tax holidays. And those days, there's basically just follow the, the arm's length principle. And uh, basically, we welcome the foreign companies to come to my country to boost our uh, uh, economic growth. That's being proved very successful all these years. And those days, actually, we gave a foreign company uh, uh, and Chinese company different tax rate. Uh, for Chinese companies, like 33% for foreign companies, it's like a 15%. So all this, after 10 years, the, this sort of uh, the uh, 
uh, the uh, 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 mechanism, we actually uh, proved to be very successful and came to the year in 2008, where we actually uh, combined these two different tax uh, the uh, system uh, means the no matter domestic companies and foreign companies they're using using the same tax rate. Uh, from there, uh, tax authorities are getting uh, more focus on the TT issues. Uh, as we know, in uh, uh, mostly we those uh, days bef uh, between 2008 to 2013, uh, China basically the following 1995 the uh, the uh, OECD uh, TV guidelines. And we also give the specific contribution to the UN tax, uh, the transfer pricing menu. And in this menu, is, there's a, a specific uh, China chapter, which is introduced uh, uh, something like specific, like location specific factors. Those are beyond actually the OECD, the, uh, uh, the TP guidelines actually introduced uh, the uh, 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 TP like, uh, the guidance. So, and also during this period of time, and China became one of the most active country uh, for BAPS uh, project. And uh, we, from in the beginning, those days in 2008, those days we only focus on the, some uh, targeting uh, Japanese companies. Nowadays, uh, move to uh, a lot of American companies, and uh, the local tax the, the uh, countries if they have transaction with these countries, particularly like uh, Singapore and Ireland as the principal company. And the tax authority would flag the, the, uh, this target for whenever there's a significant transaction with these uh, uh, locations. And then we come to recent the, uh, the years like uh, uh, since last year 2016 uh, until now we have seen three uh, and a series of uh, uh, a circular uh, uh, bulletin 42 six four and six this is by far as most important the the TP legislation uh, uh, so far issues in the Chinese history and you know Chinese used to be uh, you know whenever talking about China China is like a world market every as everybody knows however these days is no more a, a world market and it's no more a world factory it's become a world market so like the uh, the uh, CEO of the Alibaba, uh, Mr. Ma said, if you lose the, the sell your products to China, you will lose your future. This is, that's why tax authority become increasingly uh, aggressive to uh, um, try to grab their uh, fair share. Uh, that's why they issued all this detailed uh, the legislation. By far, this three, uh, the TT circular, is one of the most details the TT legislation in the world so far. And uh, the tax authority also uses uh, the you know country by country uh, reporting system, also the uh, automated. Uh, information exchange system to exchange information with other countries and uh, and also focus on specific the industries in during this period of time like uh, particularly for automotive industries pharmaceutical industries uh, such as uh, electronics industries these are targeted uh, the uh, the uh, industries for the tax authority, they come to a very detailed technical issues they like to target, such like such as the, the uh, intangible assets, additional profits, location specific factors, or even extra uh, extra charges for in, in case of um, the business restructuring. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Okay. So I just want to also introduce this, uh, you know, three uh, circular. This is a very important circulars, and uh, we have this uh, first of the uh, uh, circular 42. This is mainly focus on the uh, con contemporaneous TV documentation. As Dave mentioned, there's a three, uh, you know, they followed the uh, OECD action, the BAPS action 13, that similar structure with the uh, mass file, local file, and uh, 
special issue file um, and also a country by country report I'll, I'll introduce later uh, in, the, in a minute. And in this say particularly in this uh, local file uh, documentation they introduce the value chain analysis and this location specific factors. Uh, this, 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 by law, this is required to have to discuss these issues in their local file documentation. And then they also introduce these uh, 22 uh, uh, forms uh, instead of the used to be a non-related uh, party transaction uh, uh, reporting form. Now the 22 forms also including the uh, country by country report as part of this reporting form to be filed at the, at the, annual, at the annual tax return. So then we have also the circular 64. This one is the focus on APAs. And uh, in, for, uh, the tax authority also uh, provide the, you know, specific this, uh, six steps to follow uh, for this uh, APA request. During this request, it particularly mention if you want to have the priority and to, for the APA application, you need to discuss value chain analysis and location specific factors in your uh, application. And uh, then we have the circular six. This one is fo focused on the tax investigation and the adjustment and, uh, uh, and the math. In this one, they have came to a lot of detailed information and the rules for both for tax authority and the taxpayer, and including a lot of uh, information how what kind of uh, the target the need to uh, the uh, tax authority will start a special uh, tax in, uh, uh, TP investigation, and uh, come to the uh, TP method and uh, service fees. The uh, royalties. Most important one is the the introduce the based on the traditional OECD. They introduce the dump function. They add another P, which is a promotion uh, uh, function. Uh, this is uh, by far uh, no other tax authority actually have this uh, the rule in their uh, TP uh, rules. So this is some uh, highlights, and uh, I would like to uh, bring to your attention. And then, okay, next yeah, slide. One, yeah, one example, Ying, I think is important on, on six, uh, bulletin number six is if, uh, if you are a Chinese uh, entity, if you have a Chinese uh, legal entity in your group who pays a royalty to a, um, a IP owner hub in, say, uh, Switzerland, but that entity does not have the people who perform these damn peep functions uh, on, on its payroll. Uh, China, under this bulletin, would uh, consider that payment non-deductible right? because they say there's no people at the receiving end on a payroll who actually perform these dumping functions and therefore non-deductible. So it means the Chinese tax authorities are really stepping up to the plate in, in the light of BAPS and, and do things a, a little bit more advanced almost uh, in terms of uh, putting anti-abuse, BAP-style anti-abuse in place in their local legislation right away. And, and six is a good example of, uh, of many of those. Right. So. Yep. Thank you, Chris. Um, okay, let's go to the next slide. So based on the bulletin six, there's a lot of details as, as I, I indicated earlier. There's several of the highlights I would like to bring to your attention. So starting from the first one is the tax authority would like to start their investigation for this kind of uh, situation. Like whenever you have significant transactions and also have a, a quite different type, uh, many different type of transactions is one of the target for tax authority. And for those losses, marginal profit or fluctuated uh, profit, as you know, is the, by the traditional way to, as a hang, uh, low hanging fruit. And uh, the third one will be, you know, basically your profit is lower than the, the, uh, the uh, uh, industry level. And the uh, next one will be your profit uh, in certain situations is different than your functions and risk performed and your your allocation of profit which is quite different from the cost you actually have in case you have a significant uh, the uh, um, 
assets and the cost for this uh, the, your business. And uh, come to number five is whenever you have uh, the uh, transaction with the tax haven, that's something uh, Chinese tax authority would not like to see. So that's the, the one of the major target. And uh, by if you are required to do the contemporaneous TP documentation and you did not follow the relative the rules, this will be also the, uh, or your quality of your TP documentation is poor and could be uh, your one of the target as well. And then the next will be the thin capitalization. In China, we have basically, you know, for a financial institution, you have five to the uh, uh, debt to equity ratio is five to one. For non-financial institution, uh, the enterprises will be two to one. In case your your situation, the debt to equity is more than this standard, you need to prepare a special issue file. Uh, uh, together as part of the contemporaneous TP documentation. Our next one for those uh, the uh, companies and the transacting with the or they are controlled by the uh, foreign company and uh, for their tax rate is lower than 12.5. Uh, this is more like a for the Chinese their uh, the parent company they actually have a, a controlled foreign companies in this issue. And last one will be if you have a transaction with uh, certain, uh, you know, certain uh, uh, arrangement, which is the, the uh, uh, contracting party has doesn't have the uh, uh, reasonable business uh, substance, or just the nature of the transaction doesn't really uh, be logical. That's the same like uh, or you see act, uh, action seven and eight. Uh, 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 it's in line with the seven and eight, the requirement. So, yep. Okay. So we get to the next slide. Uh, let's introduce my my colleague Werner. Yeah. Thanks, Jane. Uh, 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 as you know, that value chain analysis is a very significant requirement in China, and and talking about value chain analysis without looking at what are the timelines by which a Chinese taxpayer has to provide that analysis in a local file will be very important. Now, when we look at the, the OECD, uh, uh, best project by the OECD, which was uh, delivered in October 15, and if we look at now, we are in June 17, it's not even more than two years, and still China has already implemented and expecting taxpayers to even provide uh, 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 their uh, master file and uh, local file, say local file by before the end of June. So when we look at the timeline, it's pretty tight for Chinese taxpayers where they have to provide local file before the uh, before 30th June. And when I say local file, local file, local file, I mean that has to have the value chain analysis in it, which which needs to disclose uh, information like which are the parties who are contributing to the value chain something about description, what activities are being taken place, and also something on profits. I will discuss that in my subsequent slide. Now, this slide is very important because here we have to actually, uh, a multinational has to actually blend what is required by the OCD uh, under Action 13 and what Chinese authorities are expecting. Now, in this example, if you see that if the financial year uh, ending ended for the group of a multinational is uh, 2017. So if that's March 17, as per uh, as per the local Chinese rule, and also when you look at BEPS Action 13, the um, multinational still has time till March 2018, by which it can file its master file for global business. But when we look at the deadline for filing uh, local file requirement in China, it's June 30. So that means that if that entity, that the Chinese entity has a year end of March 17, it still has to provide, uh, maintain the local file by 30th June of 2017. So that file has to be prepared on a contemporaneous basis. And as in then, the tax officers, they issue a tax notice that has to be provided for audit. Same thing goes with the uh, uh, master file, where if uh, the, the filing entity is a Chinese entity, in that case, 
the the filing deadline uh, 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 for filing the master file is also within 2017 rather than 18 which is there if the filing entity is in uh, is a foreign in is in foreign country then it has to follow uh, 12 months deadline now the the filing deadline for related party forms is uh, 30th may uh, with th these forms have to be filed so as far as local file goes that's not required to be filed but has to be maintained on contrapreneur's basis uh, before 30th june yeah one one uh, practical comment uh, Furender. Uh, i think uh, yes the local tp file needs to be made available upon request after the end of june this year uh, when we we talk about fy16 local transposing file to the Chinese tax inspector if he or she asks for it. Um, but what we know that uh, they're going to be sort of, um, uh, how do you say it, uh, flexible on the VCA component. Uh, they've been very explicit saying, okay, this VCA requirement is there for the first time, so we're not going to hold you postage if, uh, by the 1st of July if we ask your local file and the details around it, uh, the VCA might not look that fancy yet. Uh, so it's it's not an excuse for delay, but it gives uh, at least the notion of uh, that they're cautious as well because it's the first time they ask for a value chain analysis to be included in the local uh, transfer pricing file. Yeah. Next slide. Now this slide, uh, this slide talks about what are the requirements for under uh, value chain analysis uh, required as per Chinese tax regulation. It has two components. One is the description of value chain. And when we say description of value chain, there one has to disclose what are the intercompany transactions, what are the workflows in terms of who's doing what, which entities performing what functions, so if you have a manufacturer in China, what functions that manufacturer is performing? And if the transacting entity is the one in foreign country buying from that manufacturer, what role that entity is playing, right? And, and it, it has a much wider coverage. It doesn't stop at just looking at uh, manuf uh, uh, manufacturing activities or services. It even goes beyond. And one even has to write about billing, payments, delivery, uh, and other uh, and other transactions, so that it's very clear that at what point in the value chain that Chinese entity lies. Second element is on quantification, where one has to uh, not only disclose the financial statements of the related parties who are transacting with the Chinese entity and part of the value chain. At the same time, the Chinese taxpayer has also need to disclose who's creating, who's creating what value and that value has to be measured. Which means that if we have in the value chain, we have a manufacturer, which is a Chinese entity, we have a buyer, which is a foreign distributor, uh, and then we have another entity, which is uh, selling to customer, then we have to disclose how much profits each uh, related party to the value chain is contributing and that has to be measured. And one, has, one also needs to look at specifically on location saving advantages or factors, which is a, quite a, a burning issue in emerging markets where the argument goes like this. If you do business in emerging market or say in developing country, you get some advantages. So if those advantages are benefiting the foreign entity, then the local Chinese uh, uh, taxpayer has to be uh, uh, has to be uh, uh, needs to receive the benefits because of those location saving advantages. If there are no comparables available and no comparability adjustments can be made, and then uh, the next uh, important element here is that one even need to define what are the allocation policies and and what are the actual allocation results. That means that one has to look at how the profit allocation looks like on ex ante basis, like when you prepare budget, we see that how the profits are attrib attributed to different entities in the value chain and what the actual results look like. Now the biggest challenge here is that if you look at the deadline for filing master file by, by global uh, multinational, 
uh, if you go by the OCD, the, guy, the deadline is still until 31st March 2018. But to file value chain analysis in local, uh, to prepare value chain analysis and make it a part of local file is by 30th June. So that means that if that value chain is disclosed in the local file, that needs to be tied up properly with the value chain which will be disclosed uh, uh, in master file at a global level. Although that disclosure is not quite elaborative as it is in Chinese uh, file, but at the same time one has to really tie that up in the sense that there should not be uh, uh, any conflict between what you show in Chinese uh, uh, local file and what you show in your global master file. Yeah, just in, in, in summary, uh, uh, bulletin 42 under, um, under this uh, slide number one addresses the flows uh, and if you visualize flows between group entities you typically talk about transfer of title, um, you talk about invoicing flow, you talk about payment flow and physical flow. So those are the typical flows you would expect to be displayed under one. Uh, then the financials uh, of, of all the participants in that, in that uh, value chain is number two. The way you add location specific factors is number three and four is as, as um, Fender men mentioned uh, how you allocated the, the total profit, how, you, how did you slice the profits um, ex ante and ex post. So it looks like a very, the, the Chinese legislator took a very generic approach to describe how to display a value chain, but um, not a very narrow definition. So they took a very wide definition although in all honesty we had some challenges on how to get to a proper English wording of the Chinese uh, description. Um, but in, 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 in general it's a very wide description of a value chain the way we understand value chains uh, to, to analysis to work. Rana? Yeah, next slide. Uh, this is a a uh, typical graph we see when we look at country by country reporting for multinationals and uh, this shows us that if we have uh, too much profit per head in those countries where tax rate is low then they are typical outliers right so this type of uh, data is very relevant where the the Chinese entity which is part of the multinational is very big which means that it, it crosses that threshold of 750 million Euro up. But then when we look at the value chain analysis which has to be part of local file, even there also there would be some data which tax authorities can pick up and they can actually plot how much profit per head is earned by different countries uh, which are part of the value chain. That means that can we say that if there is a kind of a cap beyond which if, if uh, any company goes beyond that cap of profit per head that can be in a danger zone. So if I, for example, if I take an example of Apple where we say that $2 million uh, per head uh, as profit is kind, of an, uh, is kind of a ceiling, if anything is crossing beyond that, does that put me uh, uh, under red flag? Possibly yes. And why this analysis is so relevant for countries like China, the reason is that we have seen that uh, uh, China as an economy has been driven by uh, labor intensive uh, companies where uh, they were paid on a costless basis. So generally we see that profit per head is uh, low. But the things are changing today because uh, as we know that even the manufacturing is also moving up on the high, high learning curve and you have more knowledge based manufacturing is happening. So that means that if there are a lot, of, lot many employees in China and if one can construe that there's a lot of technologies also being developed by China in the plant, then the expectation of uh, uh, the profit per FT, which in our current slide is, uh, say, in our current slide is 30, uh, should go up to a much higher number. And that means that the tax authorities will definitely attack once they have the data where they see that Ireland and Singapore, where they're keeping a large amount of profit, and these type of structures will be easily challenged by the tax authorities. Okay, Fernando, let's uh, no. go to the next slide. Next slide. Um, Speak to you. So here is uh, where we, we are going to look at uh, one back for now. Uh, 
where we're going to look at uh, how value uh, how value chain and what portion of value chain to disclose to the tax inspector in China. The, the word out on the street, uh, and we, we hear that from advisors as, as well as corporates, is we do not like to disclose too much information to the Chinese tax inspector. Uh, there's various reasons for it. I, I guess the generic wording of the value chain uh, requested by, by the Chinese tax authorities is, is maybe too wide, so everyone is a little bit scared to, to give all the details away in one go. Uh, the word on the street is a little bit, as long as you give the financials of the tested party, and the tested party, let's assume, is a Chinese entity, uh, as well as you give the financials of the parent company where all the operations of the value chain are consolidated into, uh, financially at least, then you at least complied with the rules that you gave all financial data on that value chain to the Chinese tax authorities. And um, some uh, corporates and, and advisors do believe that that will get you off the hook in, in year one. Uh, but, uh, but I, I, am um, sort of more um, in favor of, of a slightly higher transparency. Uh, why? And, that, and that's, that could still be a question of timing. Uh, we, we will showcase in the, in the next five case studies what extra degree of detail you need to have readily available because even if you go for that word on the street, uh, so you only give your financials of the Chinese entity and the financials of the parent company, it might not get to you totally off the hook because the, the inspector could come back after July 1 and ask a few nasty questions and ask you exactly the questions you're not prepared for. So what, what we will showcase to you now is what we believe the questions you should be prepared for to answer. And if we take the, the next slide, and that's case study one where we say this is a classical contract manufacturer in China who works typically at a cost plus eight. It's fully benchmarked. We have a local file, uh, uh, FY15. Now we do the same thing for 16. What do we do? What do we disclose? Do we disclose just the contract between this contract manufacturer and say a Hong, Hong Kong regional hub, which says cost plus eight is sufficient and we have a benchmark to support it. And since we already displayed in a, in a visual these two legal entities, plus we, we give the financials of the parent company, um, say this is a US-based uh, parent company, we, we thereby fulfill uh, the, the request of providing a VCA. Is, is that how you want to play it? In, in this particular case, we say, okay, there's a contract manufacturer in multiple regions, uh, there, this, this multinational has contract manufacturers. So here the regional hub is, uh, say, Hong Kong, who collects all the costs from contract manufacturers in the Asia region. Uh, ultimately, the entrepreneur is, uh, because it's a U.S. headquarter company, is situated in the U.S. So are we showcasing just a simple single relationship and transactional relationship between the contract manufacturer and the regional hub? Uh, or are we also showing the entrepreneur who ultimately sells these products uh, in, the, in, in the market to independent customers, uh, as this picture visualizes? So the, the, the way we want to analyze each of the case studies, and this is an introduction to that, is by looking at the Notice 42 definition from which we uh, analyzed uh, eight ingredients. So we believe each disclosure to the Chinese tax authority should comply with these eight ingredients. So uh, you should disclose to our knowledge the in-company transaction and payment flows, the physical flows, uh, a functional analysis of what each of these, in this case, three uh, uh, free profiles uh, is uh, activity-wise performing. The participating entities, to our belief, is all three in this uh, value chain, in this transactional value chain. The annual accounts, again, is of the three visualized, and, and maybe the entrepreneur, in this case, is your parent company. So from that perspective, the word on the street versus our few uh, might not be too different. Uh, then. The, 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 the 
um, the big challenge is um, how do you weigh the relative contribution uh, to value creation by the contract manufacturing, the regional hub and, and the entrepreneur? Uh, did you take into account location-specific factors in China? And what are what is the allocation key? What is the um, formula, quantitative formula, based upon which you slice the hundred of profits amongst the three participants in this value chain? The, this is, to our knowledge, how a value chain analysis typically looks at. Um, um, so that, that is, I think, the way we would like uh, you to be prepared if the tax authorities come to you. Uh, maybe today, in, in the June local file, your VCA is only showing two boxes and is giving the financials of your parent company away to the tax authorities in the notion that that gets you off the hook under notice uh, 42. But our belief is you should apply these eight ingredients check on this particular case with uh, the consequences as, as I just outlined. Uh, so there's a slight difference. Even if you only disclose a little bit, then you should be ready after July 1 uh, or as from July 1 to answer all these additional questions. And so this is an introduction on a very standard case. Um, just one step back, why is China doing that? I think this this is uh, uh, the, the conversion we've seen in India as well, uh, where the, the, the government doesn't believe in India anymore that all the, uh, all the contract IT companies in India are still contractors of a US or a European headquarter. Uh, they develop their own uh, IT and IP uh, over time. So India put a cost plus 30 as a safe harbor on uh, on subcontracting structures because they believe more and more of the intangibles were created and originating in, in India. China is believing it, it's moving, and, and rightfully so, it's, it, it's moving from um, uh, a made in China to a designed in China uh, uh, economy. That means your subcontracting notion, uh, which everyone has, has been playing as, as the, 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 the starting position, um, might be challenged uh, as part of this value chain analysis. And I, I believe this is the signal by the Chinese tax authorities to say, we believe that we still might be a, a, a subcontractor to the rest of the world, but not in each and every case. So we need to see the whole value chain uh, a little bit more in detail. So this is the, the eight checks uh, applied on this uh, case study two. I would like to go to case study two and, and give the floor to you. Okay, thank you, Steve. Okay, um, next typical case is uh, using a Chinese entity as a contract R&D service provider. In this case, we, as you can see, we have in this box, we have also the 40% the dumpy functions like the, uh, the bulletin 6 print of the P. We have considered all these uh, dumpy functions as a whole. That's why we put it together, although this uh, R&D uh, situation doesn't really uh, uh, connect to the uh, promotion activities directly. Uh, in this case, we put that together. So, in case China has this traditionally treated as a contract R&D service provider, and uh, is contracting directly with a, a global hub or a regional hub, in the, for example, in Switzerland. And then Switzerland has uh, uh, further contracting the, all the, uh, the group IP company actually located in the U.S. For example, in this case, we need to prepare some of the homework, like Steve was mentioned, as a checklist be, uh, below. Some of the highlight, the, the, sec, the, the homework we need to do is the number three, six, and eight. This is why we need to prepare this homework. Consider Chinese company as a 40% the dumpy function in this case if we, we traditionally document as a contract R&D, in case a, a tax authority come out this question and, and consider you directly trans, uh, transacting with a regional hub, this regional hub consider is a Swiss 
company as a principal. It does not connect, it has anything to do uh, perform any dumping functions. Tax authority in this case would possibly claim all the dumping function for the Chinese entity. So in order to have this question uh, uh, being raised, uh, we need to prepare some homework. Like we have, we can prepare the, the further end in the IP company, which is in US. For example, the U.S. company in this case actually is is a true situation prepared. Actually, perform all the dumpy function. This company, as as a parent company, uh, started in, for example, in 1900. They have the technology improved all these years. All this information we can prepared as the the uh, as a homework, as uh, as much as possible and in detail. For the Chinese entities, uh, some of the, uh, we, at least ourselves, we need to, to understand tax authority may ask for the, uh, the uh, contract guarantee uh, company also have, you know, the, the, uh, through uh, interviews with the, the people uh, in the contract guarantee, uh, the, uh, the company and said they actually uh, have their testing center, have their the, the significant people function. In this case, you need to prepare this all in details to get prepared uh, in case tax authority asks for it. Comes comes to this uh, the uh, uh, um, the uh, number six for the value creation to see the weights. We probably in this case the. A traditional see this is a contract manufacturer. Uh, the contract, the R and D company, is a cost plus uh, uh, remunerated on a cost plus basis. However, uh, since it has a 40% dumping function, they probably yeah in this case quite obviously they need to uh, if they are entitled for residual profit probably for 40%. You need to get this weight you know as the, your your uh, versus to a 60%. Um, uh, the SMP function prepared by US, performed by US. In this case, all this homework get uh, prepared is the key. So if you want to initially only disclose the uh, contract R&D uh, provider and the regional hub. Uh, for the uh, value chain, uh, like the parent company, you need to get that uh, um, uh, well prepared as well. Just uh, yeah. just a comment on that, uh, Ying. Um, I think uh, if if we try to make it uh, more tangible as an example, if there's if this multinational has four business units and the lead R and D guy on on each of the four business units, two of them are are sitting in in the in the uh, IP company with this sixty percent of them people, and and two of them are sitting in China, then then. Uh, the fact that in the local file, the local transfer pricing file for uh, FY16, you need to report uh, what who the lead guys in China are and who they report into in terms of functions, then you would expect some of the R&D people in China to report into their bosses in, in the IP company. Uh, is that the US? I think you, yes, you US, mentioned yeah. the US. Mm -hmm. and, and two of the VPs of R&D uh, who run the other two uh, business units departments will not report to anyone uh, so they will suddenly report to themselves because they're in the lead of the other two business units the combination of the fact that you have to disclose the org chart the Chinese org chart plus who these people uh, at the top of this Chinese org chart report into uh, combined with uh, with the uh, the fact of a VCA does provide a lot more information to the Chinese tax inspector than ever before, uh, leading to conclusions like the, the one on this particular case. So we do believe and we come across uh, more and more questions which go in this direction. So you need to not only check the VCA and be ready for a dis full disclosure of the VCA, but also in this case you need to be ready to disclose the um, the management structure, so the organizational management structure and the reporting lines up the chain in combination, uh, being potentially very fatal on, on conclusions of cost plus doesn't work anymore, huh, which is your point, Dave. Right. 
Okay. Thanks, Shane. Uh, so I will take up uh, the next uh, case study and uh, let's take an example of a service provider who is based out of China and that service provider is providing editorial services to group entities. Now, in this case, we have a Chinese entity as an editorial service provider is working on a prosperous basis and we have a regional hub which is responsible for getting editorial work from different countries uh, in Asia. And then we have uh, an entrepreneur which is a principal entity which owns the title to the journal and the books and this, uh, this entrepreneur is in the US and selling books and journals to its own customers. Now, if we look at China as a service provider, to the extent the Chinese entity is maintaining relationship with the local authors, convincing them that that's the right quality of journal we produce, and also uh, discussing the, the right content with them, to that extent, there is kind of value which is being created by the Chinese entity. And if we look at a Chinese service provider merely uh, as an entity where it is actually translating the, the, the English content uh, of journal into Chinese language for local purpose, then the value created by a Chinese entity gets limited. Because in this whole value chain analysis, what we are supposed to look at is that which entity in the well, which entity in the value chain is creating value? Which entity is contributing uh, more to the value chain? Now, looking this value chain, and when we look at the checklist, which is part of the bulletin 42, if we have to describe the functions as per serial number three, then we have to clearly explain that whether this Chinese entity is a mere cost plus editorial services or it's doing much more where there are a lot of interactions are happening between this uh, Chinese uh, editorial company bit and with the entrepreneur which is in the US where uh, this Chinese entity is also building relationship with authors. If we go by that, then the question becomes, the next question which we need to ask is that in this value chain, should I disclose the, uh, uh, disclose the financial entity uh, the, the, the participating entity and the financials of the participating entities only of the service provider as a Chinese entity in the regional hub or do I need to go beyond that and even disclose the, the financials of the entrepreneur because there are interactions between uh, the Chinese entity and the entrepreneurs possibly as more like uh, by contributing a significant value by the Chinese entity, right? So in serial number four, we have to disclose the participating entities and in this case as I said if service provider as a Chinese entity is adding larger value then we have to possibly disclose all three entities which is a Chinese entity, digital hub and entrepreneur in the uh, as part of uh, checklist uh, of bulletin 42. The, the next point we need, need to look at is location specific factors. Now as we know that uh, uh, many developing countries are selected as location for doing business or setting up offices is also uh, cost advantage. So if in, the, in this current example, the, uh, the cost, uh, the, the editorial company was set up in China because of low cost and right knowledge pool available, then one has to even look at the location specific advantages or factors in the sense of low cost and then decide how much of that cost saving should go to China and how much of that cost saving should be taken by entrepreneur and this all it depends on whether uh, there is a strong bargaining between the entrepreneur, entrepreneur and service provider that would possibly define who will take how much portion of that saving or if there are good comparables available uh, in public domain uh, where you can find similar comparables like the Chinese entity and that may not warrant any adjustment. But the key message here is that these expanded requirements under bulletin 42 requires actually to list all list and describe all these eight factors including location specific factors which gets complicated where it's not easy to find comparables and you have to carry out certain adjustments next slide please okay um for this uh, case study four, we're looking at the uh, a Chinese sales and marketing entity. Uh, in this case, this sales and marketing entity is 
uh, basically a full-fledged uh, the uh, uh, sales and marketing entity. In they are basically we are looking at a, a, a example is a, a, a sort of like a, a luxury goods industry. In this case, and if I have the manufacturer one, manufacturer one is located in a foreign country. Say this manufacturer is a French entity. The French entity has started like uh, uh, 150 years ago. They have this world famous the, the uh, handbag, this, mark, the, this trademark and brand everybody knows in this world. And then they have the 90% of the dumpy function is located in this French entity. And this French entity and basically uh, manufactured majority of this uh, the, the handbag, this part, and then they transfer this to uh, uh, another manufacturer entity in Asia, let's say manufacturer two. This is like say an entity uh, located in Vietnam. In Vietnam, the uh, uh, folder at the uh, certain small the uh, the uh, parts or like a uh, like a locks or something in this handbag, and transacting with party to sell the, the huge market in China, because as you know, uh, the Chinese uh, the uh, uh, people basically has a specific the uh, the uh, preference for foreign branded uh, handbags and luxury goods, they have been traveling around the world to buy this kind of stuff. They just love this kind of uh, the uh, this uh, 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 product. So this uh, almost like 90% of customers are located in China. They love these handbags and they sell that in, in China without uh, any problem. So this in China, they have very inelastic this kind of demand for this uh, the handbags and luxury goods. And in China, they, they love this foreign branded uh, product. So in this case, if we look at the, the Chinese uh, company as a sales entities and directly transacting with the Vietnamese companies, if we only show this, uh, the, these two entities on the value chain, we probably, you know, have the similar situation like uh, I like I presented in case two. In this case, and the uh, tax authority would say all this dumpy function should go to China plus my location specific savings in China. For this China, they have this market premium, they love this product, you have this huge population base to buy in this product and create a significant value for your group. So in this case, if we not disclose manufacturer one, would create a problem for tax authority to claim all the dumpy function to China. So in this case, we have some homework to do as the key uh, um, highlighted parts that like uh, underneath number three, six, seven, and eight. In this case, number three will be uh, your homework to prepare all the detailed function analysis of each of the group entity, what they actually, their functions and risk and assets to clearly uh, as a backup file. Uh, secondly is number six and to see the, uh, to prepare a certain uh, backup file to say the uh, the 90% actually goes to a French entity and 10% actually belong to Chinese entity. Um, in this case, and we can prepare some homework on that, location specific factor in this case will be your key highlight to prepare whenever this case for uh, 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 industry, uh, for luxury goods industry. That's your uh, something you need to prepare as a focus. And come to the uh, the last and for this Chinese entity, and uh, traditionally we see this a uh, full fledged the the, uh, the uh, uh, sales entity. Uh, for this, we remunerate it, and uh, for their uh, residual profit, and we do in this case because of the 10 percent dumpy function, we have to plus this 10 percent extra uh, profit plus another location specific factors 
the this the uh, the profit derived from this. So all this have to consider and as a, a sort of uh, a backup file. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, thanks, Ying. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, in this next in this next slide, what we are talking about is dual functionality, and as we have seen that there have been many companies who have uh, grown in inorganic way by acquiring Chinese entities. Now, in this in this example, you will see that IP company say it's it's located in Germany. We have a parent company which is more like a matchmaker principle is in Switzerland. And then we have a Chinese entity which has two units. One is contract manufacturing and second is doing sales and marketing. Uh, uh, and here you will see that the flow of goods is more like circular in the sense that the Chinese entity is, is a contract manufacturer, but goods, they don't leave China if they have to be sold in China, but the payment flows is between Swiss entity and contract manufacturer in China where uh, uh, contract manufacturer is paid for its contract manufacturing services and then the goods are sold to the another unit within the same legal entity which is sales and marketing and selling to customers. Now when we look at, uh, uh, as far as we look at the value chain, it's not very complicated if we say that uh, contract manufacturer is actually a cost center, a routine player and selling unit is more uh, like a selling entity but if it is uh, adding uh, value to the DEMPI functions, say by performing promotional activities as uh, required by the Chinese tax authorities to explain, then one can argue that uh, there should be some profits, uh, residual profit needs to be split between the sales and marketing unit and the IP company where 90% DEMPI function resides. Things get complicated if we say that contract manufacturer unit which also possibly owns some know-how and show-how because this Chinese entity was acquired by the multinationals and then the question comes to uh, one has to really look at is uh, what value creation weights should we look at? Is the technology know or show how by contract manufacturers contributing to the value to, to the value chain in the value chain or is it sales and marketing is contributing more? And then one has to really decide different weights to different uh, uh, apart uh, different intellectual property which is adding value to the value chain. And when it comes to annual accounts, uh, uh, providing annual accounts of the participating entity, then what one not only has to provide the financials of the IP company and the Swiss principal, but also uh, clear cut segmental accounts of two units in China where one has to really show that what profits they're earning and so that officer can check how much uh, they are contributing to the value and whether their profits match to that or not. Yeah, and the, the point here is, uh, Ferrander and uh, Ying and, and, and audience, if, uh, if in this case, uh, sales and marketing, uh, China pays a license to this parent company, Swiss entity, with no people on the payroll performing these DEMPI functions, and you're not showing the real IP company with the real people who perform DEMPI functions outside China, you might not get a deduction under uh, 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 circular number six as we outlined uh, earlier in the in the presentation. So the fact that you're not disclosing the whole value chain might simply uh, force you to give up a deduction under the, the, the way the Chinese tax authorities introduced BAPS. Just in the light of time, uh, and, and we, we booked you for an hour, so let's move to the next slide. Maybe I'll, I'll take a, a quick step and invite the Ying at the end to, to add a few things. Location-specific factors, we, we said, okay, there's three ways to illustrate that to you. There's one, if you do um, um, a production in France, say the luxury goods uh, for 150, but you subsequently move production into China, 400, then this is the mechanism which uh, uh, the UNTP manual indicates to be a more proper remuneration to China uh, in, in the light of the whole thing. So cost plus eight on the, on the relevant benchmark, uh, but adding a location specific factor on the delta of uh, between 100 production cost in China versus 150 in, in France. Uh, a second way of looking at uh, the, the sales uh, angle, it, so let's assume you sell ice cream, uh, you're a big multinational and you sell ice cream in Europe, then you need to translate all these marketing campaigns in Danish, in Greek, in French and the likes. 
uh, here um, the, the the question is you, you run one campaign for selling ice cream in China and and based upon that the uh, the, the uh, percentage wise the marketing cost will be lower as a consequence you will are bound to, by the sheer size of the market to earn a, a, a slightly better margin so this is a size of the customer market which has uh, potentially an, a negative impact on your cost of goods produced uh, because the volume is bigger but also on your marketing cost per uh, uh, ice cream consumer and, and this is a way to uh, to say, okay, this is enlarging the compensation to the sales operations in China. A third one is sort of one of our case studies. Uh, I think it's case study two, where we said contract R&D does also um, perform some damping functions and should not only get cost plus eight, but also should get 20% of the residual, just as an illustration. I think with this, uh, we are sort of getting to the uh, ends uh, of, uh, of this uh, conference. I don't know, I'm looking around uh, the audience whether there's any final comments Ying or Render would like to make um, and, and or questions from the audience. Uh, you're free to uh, type them in. Ying, Verander? Uh, see, one my observation is that uh, there are very tight uh, timelines to uh, to maintain local file in China and which will have a quite descriptive and quantitative value chain analysis disclosure. The challenge will be to how to actually uh, how to ex actually bring uh, the value chain analysis which has to be provided by multinational as part of Action 13 master file and how to map that with a value chain al analysis which has to be part of local file because one needs time and data to uh, bring them together. So uh, a time will tell how that will uh, pan out, but uh, at least uh, to the uh, to certain level, the multinational has to disclose that value chain in China, where they should bring the relevant related parties uh, to the value chain, and that's how they should disclose their financial numbers. But it will be difficult at this point to disclose the full value chain where the whole group is involved, because uh, uh, one has to really draw a line somewhere that whether I should show a full-blown value chain or I should be restrictive to the extent it is relevant for China. I think for the uh, one of the uh, things because the, uh, the uh, bulletin 42 only bring up the four lines for the value chain analysis, people can uh, interpret it in a, 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 all sorts of different ways to interpret this. There's no detailed guidance, that's one. So people, how to interpret this I, we heard a lot of different interpretation, interpretation uh, in the in the in the Chinese uh, TT practice. I think there's no specific uh, cookie cutter for one, you know, one for all to prepare the, the specific the the value chain analysis. For us, a message to our audience will be uh, to prepare your homework, prepare the specific highlights in terms of your industry, in terms of your specific the. Uh, uh, intercompany arrangement. That's the, the key for your uh, value chain analysis. Okay. With that, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the audience for participating and look for our other uh, events. There will be the same conference on the same topic uh, tomorrow in Chinese language uh, with Ying and, and our other colleagues uh, from China uh, for you or your colleagues. Uh, thanks for today and uh, keep uh, Keep on the watch on uh, our various uh, conferences we will be organizing, uh, and uh, I wish you a good day. Thank you very much. This, Thank you. Uh, closes the uh, webinar of today.